Real fan ownership, real fan input, real fan change, real fan power. 50 plus one, we can go better than that. 100 plus none. Download our app, view the free content, read about the club, that's fine. But if you want more, become a member to vote, to go behind the scenes, to make an impact, interact with a global community around the world, influencing how we grow, where we play, club ethics and values. The more members we have, the faster we grow. Support the club, run the club, own the club. This is ours and no one will take it away. The future is in all our hands. that is it you've just seen it it is now live if you would like to become a founder member of Stretford Paddock Football Club the link is in the description it is live right now we did a soft launch last week it, it's gone quite well there is a couple of bugs in there and I'm sure there's going to be tons and tons of questions if you've got any questions about what we are doing why we are doing it all the rest of that sort of stuff that's what this video is for is to talk to you guys about uh, fan ownership. Obviously, I'm here with someone that's usually on the XG files with us, Ronaldo, but he's also a player with us, and, and we're here to talk about anything that you guys want to ask us about. So, yeah, it's live. No, it is, and it's, it's, it's obviously very, very exciting. As, um, as I've always said, the club's got an incredibly high ceiling to it, and I've kind of enjoyed seeing the progression, because actually, you might not see it that way, but I've been here from the beginning. I know you've been here from the beginning. And you've, you've shown me questionable loyalty. I'm not going to talk about that <laughs> in terms of performances and that, but I've actually enjoyed. Obviously, I've gone up, tried to play a little bit higher, but I've always seemed to come back to you, mate. I'm back to Paddock FC and the family. Um, as it says on the page, if you go and click the page, Threat for Paddock FC started with uh, community. Uh, it started um, all the way back in 2019 when we were entering uh, five-a-side competitions mm. as Studio 68, as a, as a company, as, as what we do for a job. That's how a lot of the original football team started. Manchester United obviously started as, as workers of, of a railway station, uh, Newton Heath um, and Lancashire, Rail, Lancashire Yorkshire Railway Company, I think was what the clubs originally called. So our, our origins as a football club started on the back of just a group of colleagues, workmates, playing football together. We entered five sides. We had a, a blue kit. Our studio's called Studio 68 because we moved in there on the um, 50th anniversary of the 1968 Cup win. So we called it Studio 68 on the back of that. Um, so we played in all blue as of mm. the you know the 68 Cup final. Um, when we created Stratford Paddock, the fan channel, we created um, a red kit because... Well, it looked good, didn't it? But yeah, let's it be honest, the logo looked pretty good on a kit. And then we started playing in those competitions as Strep for Paddock because we was a fan channel. You guys are the reason that we've ended up doing this because there was people going, you should make an actual football mm. team because obviously at the time there was a lot of content sort of teams out there. And I said, you know what? Let's see if there's any demand for that. And we put out a trial. There was 100 people turned up at a trial. You know, we, we started training somewhere. We joined the Lancashire and Cheshire League. With... No idea what we're doing, to be honest. <laughs> and um, now nah, a lot of people thought you were insane to begin with. <laughs> and we were competitive, <laughs> and we were recruiting a really good side. And after the end of that first season, curtailed with COVID, we got promoted into the Premier Division. Um, we soon became everyone's favourite team to play. Um, we didn't win the league. We won seventy five percent of our games, but we didn't win the league. And um, we've just had our application accepted to get to a Step Seven League, which is the Cheshire League, um, which means we're now a handful, less than a handful, uh, you know, potentially three years away from playing in the FA Cup, which is an absolute mad, mad thing to say. But one of the things that we wanted to do with this club, I announced last year, was it February last year when mm. the Super League stuff yeah. came out? I put a statement out if that said, as, a, as someone involved in football whether that's covering it as content or even with my own you know, glorified pub team i don't want this sort of thing happening the european super league was horrible it was egregious it was everything 
that sport is good about taken away. It was ring fencing stuff. The, the, I mean, our little promotions that we've had so far, they don't exist in a, a world where the European Super League is, I think. European Super League takes away achievement, competition. It takes away dreams. We're t sitting here talking about being in the FA Cup. Now, imagine that that European Super mm -hmm. League affected the FA Cup in a way, and it was just like, now nah, all the clubs are in, they're in, and that's it. There's it was like really elitist, where it was. It, yeah, it, it yeah. had that little vibe of we always talk about how important fans are in sport in general. Without fans, there can't really be any sport. We drive the revenue, we watch, we support, we help teams perform. And that whole Super League thing just seemed to kind of be a massive slap in the face in fans. It and was. the whole fandom kind of. I wouldn't want United to be in any sort of ring fence league mm. where they can't get out of it. The the English football pyramid is amazing because of the pyramid. Being at mm. the top of that pyramid is amazing because it's a pyramid. There's somewhere in the region of like a thousand football teams below the Premier League. It's linear, obviously, for the, the football league, but as soon as you get below the conference, it just doubles and doubles and doubles and doubles and doubles. And, and that's why it's a pyramid, because it's got this enormous base with, you know, pretenders like us at the very, very bottom of it, propping mm -hmm. this whole card show up. But then as you move through, you obviously got the likes of FC United, Curzon Ashton, Salford. I mean, even in this area alone, there's an absolute wealth of football teams, all with their own heritage, all with their own culture, and all with their own everything. Because it's of what the European Super League represented, the statement that I put out was, I don't know where this journey's going with Stratford Paddock FC. But I would like it to be something community owned, something that is not this, something that is not European Super League. And it's took a long time, one, to work out the legalities and the company structures and, and this, that and the other of what you've got to do to create this. And it's just taken so long. Obviously, there's, there's an app which um, is near enough finished. It's got to go through the approval process of the, the Google Play Store and, and the iOS Store. The app's going to give us the opportunity for you guys to be able to pay monthly and make it a little bit more affordable because that's an important thing about this as well. We want people to be owners, but it's not just about have you got a load of cash and can you join? Mm. There is a one-member, one-vote system. It's more akin to Barcelona than, than anything else. I mean, the German football model was something that is pretty admired. And it's something I admire, and I'd love it at United. I think it's the more feasible sort of ownership model for a Premier League team, at least. Mm. I, I'm not sure how feasible um, our ownership structure is for you know top elite sport. But we're a community club. So in my eyes, we should be owned and supported by our community. One member, one vote. This isn't a share. You can't sell your ownership. No one's meant to profit from this in any way whatsoever. It's about become a member, have your say, have a vote, steer the future of this club, the values and the standards and the ethics that this club, you know, there's there's loads of things that I've not made decisions on yet on purpose. Things like, should we take alcohol and gambling sponsorship? Because there's a lot of that out there. Yeah. Ultimately, I want to be a junior academy. Now, my gut feeling is, I probably don't want to take alcohol and gambling sponsorships as a community football team. I have no qualms taking it myself. My audience that watches this YouTube channel Mate. is like you know, mid-30s. So I have no problem having gambling sponsors on my channel because I know the age profile of my audience. The football team's a little bit of a different audience. And if we're a junior academy, I think that's a, a different thing. So I can compartmentalize my sponsorships. But us being a community club, I want to put that to the audience. Should we as a football club take alcohol and gambling sponsorships? That's something that we're going to be voting on very soon. Another thing we're going to be voting on very soon is should this membership have a concessionary price for, for students, for older people, uh, and for children? That's probably the first thing we're going to put to vote very, very soon, probably by the end of this month. So there's yeah. loads of ways we can steer how this club works. Um, you're not going to get to sack me, unfortunately. <laughs> but if, if the fan, um, so you're fan base got, demands it... So you're saying they've got absolutely no say in lineups, team selections? No, you've not, unfortunately, Ronaldo. Right. Um, right, what we have in place is we have a committee. At the moment, there's 12 people on that committee. Um, I'll read all of those people out for you. In fact, they're on the website if you would like to go and check it out. Um, so all of the mm. people that are on the committee are people that have helped get the club um, to the place that we're in at the moment. There's people that are doing coaching mm. roles at the club and that sort of stuff. And we've also got a couple of administrative people on there. So I'm down as CEO. You've got David Pritt, um, you know, Dave from all of the youth videos and stuff like that. Dave is our club secretary, works incredibly hard. 
My old man is going to be the chairman. Um, obviously, he's the reason that I'm even into football in the first place, and he's got that sort of authoritative way of speaking with other chairmen. I'm not a chairman. <laughs> <laughs> we have a treasurer who is Julie Cartwright, who's incredibly experienced. She's a she's come to us from Sale United, um, which is a, a massive junior academy with like five six hundred kids. So she's there to help administer that. We have got um, head of technical development, which is Jayan Evans, uh, which is a, a really good coach. That's down into the you know, the pure technical details of stuff. Um, coaching representative is our assistant uh, reserve manager, Matty Ahern. We have a welfare officer, which is Josh Reed. The player representative is the club captain, which is James Oat. Um, Janine is on there as brand manager. We have Deji, who's here behind the camera. He's our operations manager. He's the one who deals with all the sponsorships. And the one that's important for you guys is our fan representative, which is John O'Neill. You might know John and Alex. They've been on videos and stuff on the fan channel before. Um, John Neill and Alex Neill have been there from the start with us. Was there at our first ever game. Um, they've got the Strep for Paracultures flag. And I asked John to be our first fan representative. Now, when we hit 500 mm. fans, we're going to elect another fan representative from you guys. And this is how it's going to work. We're going to ask for people who go, do you know what? I'd like to be a fan representative. And now John's someone that's there at the ground. Maybe we need someone who's not local. Maybe we need someone from America or Australia or Norway or Ireland. Someone that represents the more online fan sort of um, opinion. But we'll be asking you guys to put yourself forward and say, I'd like to be a fan representative. This is what I can bring. And then we'll put you guys to the vote and the community will vote on whether they want you to be their fan representative or not. And every major milestone that we reach in terms of membership numbers, we will elect another fan representative to the board. And everything that we do and discuss and we put to a vote, committee meetings will get the results of those votes and decisions will be made on the back of those things. I think this is the way to run a football club. And I could be wrong. But I, I look at what's happened at Manchester United, I look at what happens mm -hmm. at other clubs and for me, having the fan base have a say with a committee of experienced people um, to make those decisions with the fan vote is, I think, a proper democratic way to run a football club. Um, is there any questions anyone wants to ask in there? Uh, James Kadar says, Padacultures. Yeah, there's a Padacultures flag. I mean, can we get it on the screen to show them? I feel like there's a pretty sturdy Padacultures firm already when we were playing at draws then. <laughs> oh yeah so yeah, as you can see what's going on behind <laughs> yeah. I've, I've got it on my phone i'll send it to you if you want so on the screen behind us there's some benefits to becoming a member straight away these are badges the first one that you're going to get is the gold one that you just saw there um everybody who joins in 2022 is going to become a founder member um uh, and scott harris just commented the link only seems to be the yearly option yeah at the moment mate the link does only have the year the yearly option the monthly option will come with the app which is probably a few weeks away so we've got there, on, oh, it's gone again. Go put it back on. Uh, we have got here the, um, the gold one, which is going to be everyone who's a founder member. So that's the first wave. Everybody that joins in 2022, um, you guys are getting the founder member badge. Anyone that joins after the founder membership finishes, so as of 2023, January 1st, you'll just get those. And, and then we'll have subsequent members badges every single year. That's a little um, enamel pin badge that we're going to be sending out. You will also get a founder member certificate. Uh, which looks like this. Probably, this is the design TBC, but that's uh, an, an actual certificate. It's got red gold foil on there, uh, or red shiny foil, I guess, on there, though, to, 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 to sort of not make it a bit fancy, but it's actual certificate paper. I hope they, they get all these framed. Um, you'll get that, as well as your founder member badge. And then you'll also get this, which is um, a permanent fixture in our forever home, wherever that ends up being. Um, and we're working on that. No, nope, wrong one. Um, we're working on this right now. And I hopefully we'll have more things to talk about you guys. Um, with you guys. We're trying to find a home. At the moment, we're a men's team. We want to be a junior academy. We want to be a place where kids come and play football before they move on to places like United and before they move on to professional clubs. We're going to build something which dedicated to our founders. Forever a founder means... You'll have your name in the stadium. Everyone who joins in 2022, we will find some sort of memorial to every single person who got us going from the start. It is completely worldwide. Manchester and Marrakesh and anywhere in between. That's why we're doing it with the app. Um, and the app is a couple of weeks away. 
the app should be with you guys pretty soon. We've got the app screen. Um, yeah, as it says there, you'll get to see all of the club news, all of the fixture lists. We're working on um, player profiles and, and stats and all of that sort of stuff. There is going to be exclusive interviews. There will be the full 90 minutes of matches. When live streaming becomes a reality, live streaming will happen in the app for you guys so you can watch the game wherever you are. You will get early kit releases. There will be discount codes on the uh, merchandise as well. The app is going to be the hub of the club. Um, this is what we are all about. The democratic part of it will be a locked members feature. So if you're a member, you'll get that. Um, and the, the members feature will allow you then to vote on stuff. And it'll allow you to also put things forward. You say, listen, I'm not happy with this. I'd like to see us do X. Whether that's, Joe, you, know, you want to see us have a women's team, you want to see us you know, try and get an under-18s team, whatever it is that you feel strongly about, put it forward. Put it to your fan representative and they will put it towards the committee and then we'll put it to a vote. It's as simple as that. Um, got some questions. Let's go through some of these questions. Mikey says, how do I plan on linking the sequential numbers of the membership to the app? I will show you right now. We have... You can't see this, so it's thinking that's the database at the moment of everybody. Uh, we are up to 186 people have joined as members. You absolute legends. So Spreadsheet nerd. Yeah, <laughs> spreadsheet nerd, left, right, and center. Um, this spreadsheet is a Google sheet which automatically populates after it's been bought. So it fills in your name, it fills in your email address, um, your physical address, and then there's a sequential number popping in as well. So Thomas Staunton, you've just joined. You are number 185. Luke Bramwell, you are 184. Grant Simile, you are 183. Um, I'll just read some of these out that catch my eye. Um, someone here has just put their address instead of their name. So the email, Darth Smoke a lot. Do you want to send us your real name? Because otherwise <laughs> your certificate is going to have your address on it rather than your name. But you're number 169. Uh, JC, you're number 166. <laughs> when you're filling in your name, fill out what you want on your certificate because that's what we're going to have. Uh, I messaged Notch about this and said, you've just put Notch on there. Do you want Notch? And he was like, I just want Notch. All right, fine. No problem. So whatever you put as your name, um, Rob Patrick, you've just put Rob. Do you want Rob or do you want your full name in there? Uh, let us know, whatever you want. Don't tell me in the chat because I'll lose that. Email us. Um, Brian Tuyun Chis, uh, you are number 118. Uh, Mohamed Laher, you are 117. Uh, Brandon Hoffman, 113. Um, Colin McGrath, 110. Matthew Hughes, 100. Let's get into the, the lower numbers. Brian Whitaker, number 80. Um, 75. Alex Neald. Um, John Neal, number 71. Uh, Mr. L. Taylor, 68. Nate uh, Jackson, 65. So it is sequential. All of you guys are just going to get it in the order that you, you got it in, and, um, and that's, that's that. I actually found out Barcelona do something where uh, your number stays. If you pass away, mm. everyone moves up one. So the numbers stay. So like number one at Barcelona is like the guy who's been there. So is, is it just Barcelona that do this? That I know of. That you know There's of. other clubs that do stuff like this, but Barcelona obviously being a, a real high-profile club, mm. their socios... Uh, their number stays. You don't keep your number. You move up into... So it's proven it can work, order. yeah. They have... Mm. I mean, Barcelona's is funky because you had to be sort of recommended by an existing member to join. It's pretty restrictive. Yeah. And they've only recently started allowing non-Catalans to, to actually join Yeah, because well. that, that was my main thought process when I heard that Barcelona, I thought, what is the kind of regime we've seen? Do they kind of select who they allow to be on it? Is it really a free-for-all? Because I doubt it would be at that high profile of a club. That's probably the difference yeah. with us. David yeah. Ward's asked what number is he? You are number 163, mate. <laughs> um, who is number one? Number one is my granddad. I put my granddad down mm, as number one. Chairman. Um, <laughs> so, no, my dad's chairman. I put my granddad down as number oh. one. Um, I've took number 0000, zero, zero, zero. as the founder. I think I'm allowed that. Mm. Um, what's funny is I've, I sent a link out for people to test. My granddad's got 0001. Zero, 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 um, and my uncle, funnily enough, called Stephen Housen. He's got number two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I think the first person that's not um, one of the family members is is one of our coaches, Josh. Josh got number three. Um, Bill got number four. Don't read that one out. Um, my dad's took number nine. Um, but there's there's some of you guys. I think Patreon. Some of you guys have got really early ones. Fergie Mc, uh, Fergal McClements, number six. Uh, Gil Erez, uh, number seven. Uh, Cameron Clark, number 11. 
some really low numbers there from people. Number 69 is Martin Rook. Um, let's see what comments we've got uh, or questions. Uh, Charles says, just joined the ownership. Um, James Kadar says, do Paddock players get paid? No, they don't. What we've done this year with the sponsorships that we've got is we've eliminated subs for the first team. Uh, the development team, the amateurs, and the 21 still pay subs. Um, but the first team don't. We've done that this year as a little bit of a recruitment tool because I'm sure you'll um, y you'll know. Mm. There's a bit of a mental block in there for some lads that have been paid to play yeah, last season down. or the season before. And we go, yeah, come join us. They, they like the setup, they like the coaching, and then they go, I'm kind of paying, Kind I'm of deterred by the fact that you've got to play subs, especially now that we're going up the leagues and we're progressing. We want to be able to keep kind of certain quality of player. In order to do that, I think subs have to not, kind of not be yeah. there, especially... Because a lot of the other Chesh League clubs won't have their players doing that. No, we, with the league that we're mm. going into, we know that um, probably 90% of them don't pay subs. Some of those will also either pay win bonuses and maybe at the very, very top, um, they'll be... Backhanded. Um, I, I can't say that yeah. on camera, yeah. whether I believe that or not. <laughs> um, but I know that there are people that are getting paid a little bit. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Ultimately, Allegedly. I would like us to be in a place where we can pay. Yeah. I mean... You know, we have mentioned going up to the FA Cup. If we get to that stage, yeah, 100%. But you guys will get the vote on it. That's the most important thing. Exactly, because that was one of the questions that I saw earlier. Was like, was asking you what is your actual goal for the club? Because I know there isn't a, actually a set one. You just kind of see where it goes. But you're, you're talking about in terms of personnel. Do you want players to be moving on? Do you want to keep them? Are you trying to progress on the levels? I, You've been the, speaking about that since the beginning. Yeah, uh, what I loved last mm. year. So last year we moved ten players on. You were one of them, so we have to knock that off it. And yeah, <laughs> returned. Uh, you knock back, but um, we moved ten players on after essentially like six months of playing football. I'm really proud of that. And there was players that were lost to the game mm. a little bit that we got back playing football, and I'm really proud of that. I'm really proud that we've had a hand in some players getting back playing conference level football, and obviously to your mates. But yeah. you, you know, you know what we're on about there. Um, the the club last year, the, what happened with the club really changed um, my whole thinking about what this club was going to be. And that was one of the reasons why I want to really push for having a junior academy. You know this yourself. You came through a really good grassroots team at Fletcher Moss. Yeah. Absolutely known for just... Like, yeah. Jesse went there. Mark Carousel. Went there. I mean, who else has gone there? Roshan Williams. Was there, Roshan. Tons of players. Spent United and City players galore, isn't it? Yeah, galore. So Fletcher Moss around Manchester is in Didsbury for anyone who's interested in thinking, I've got a little six year old. Yeah, fuck it. He's in Didsbury. Go go Mersey Bank. Um, go check out Fletcher Moss. Now they've got a reputation. Mm. I would like us to have one day. There's another team in Manchester called uh, Manchester Corinthians. They're another team, but they're a bit more nomadic. They don't really have a home ground like Fletcher Moss do. My mate coaches for them, and I think they just play, I could be wrong on this, but I think they just play wherever the coach lives. So there's loads of, like, there might be some based in, like, well, Eden Chapel, garden. there might be some <laughs> draws, there might be some in Gorton. And I think they just sort of play wherever the, the local kind of mm. um, coach lives, and then they work um, wherever they can like that. So, but they're another club that's just got this brilliant reputation of producing top players. Now, the reason for that is because they pay their coaches. So the good coaches want to be gravitating towards going to these clubs. Uh, coaches want to go to Fletcher Moss because they've got the reputation to bring in good kids and they, and they do the same at, um, at Manchester Corinthians. Mm. It's a goal of mine if we ever end up with our own facility that we will have um, paid junior coaching. So you know, it's not someone's dad on the sideline <laughs> telling you to get rid of it at six. But it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's an ambitious young coach that's maybe working on his UA for B licence mm. that's actually going to teach you some really good football fundamentals. You can't go to United. You can't rock up at Carrington with your boot bag and be like, Aya, can I come and train and get really good at football? It doesn't work like that. You have to go through a grassroots club. And football in this country, in my opinion, is left down so much to chance that your local football club's actually got a very good young coach. And it's not someone's fucking lunatic dad, right? And I know I'm someone's lunatic dad, but I'm not coaching the kids, right? So you want to go to places where you can get in really good fundamental coaching, eliminate that chance. And I would love us to build our own facility and to become known in this area, because I think it's achievable, to become known in this area as you come here and it gives you a really good footing to move on to play for United or City or Blackburn or Burnley, or but have a career in the game. And on the flip side of that, so that'd be the first chance sort of element. 
I want to give us a second chance. You know what it's like getting binned out of an academy. Mm. You know a ton of your friends have been. I was going to say that because you're talking about um, the juniors kind of progressing and becoming academy players or whatever, but it's the same from the top players coming into the first team that have dropped down levels that want to go back up because we've seen it more and more now at the top level where players have been shooting up the ranks and that seems to be because kind of the level in grassroots football in, in England has improved so mm. much you're more likely to see players that have been in the conference or the, the counties or Northern Prem and then they, they kind of rise up the ranks and end up playing in the championship in League One rather than those players that have been starting out at the Liverpool academies and in the under 23s, the Burnley's academies in the 23s and then making their way down. They're the ones that are losing out to the players that have gone up through this way. It's yeah, I mean, with Ollie, Ollie Watkins, yeah. D- Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Um, Dan Byrne. Th- there's so yeah. many people have had a taste. Uh, Jamie, Jamie Vardy is obviously the poster child for this. But there's so many players that have had a taste of non-league. Chris Smalling, you know, out here winning trophies with Roma. Like, there's so many people have had their start in non-league. It, it, not only he's flying at the moment. Yeah. Salford did a madness. FC United uh, 15 years ago did a madness and have, have really established themselves as a, a proper top club in the area. Macclesfield are doing a fucking madness at the mm. moment. Non league is flying. Stockport, like five figures watching them, 10, 12,000 people. It's absolutely bonkers. And this isn't a dig at I, Premier League football. It's not a dig at anything like that. It's just this is how fo- uh, football is popular in this country. That's literally surprised me though. That's one of the biggest surprises I've had. That's opened my eyes from going down into grassroots and then obviously going to play um, to clubs like Rami and then playing against Encumbra against teams like Workington or whatever. I didn't realise the fan bases that these clubs have this far down. They've got kids nine years and younger in full kit going to watch games late at night. I was surprised by it. We were surprised when we played at draws and the amount of fans that we got down. Yeah. And he's and talking I hope about that's something that happens and again. And he's talking about the actual interest that's in grassroots football now because there's a real kind of genuine authenticity about it. And that's what I like. This is another mm. thing that we want to bring with you guys as well. Mm. You guys now, you, you own the club. So from a, a, a legal structure point of view, how does that actually work then? So the way it's going to work is we've registered Stretford Paddock, right, um, as a community interest company. And it's in the constitution of the club, which is available on the website to go and look at that the club is owned by its members. And to become a member is obviously the, the details that we've, we've given you so far this morning. Click the link uh, and check it out. You become a member, you become an owner. Now, it's different to being like uh, you know, a shareholder because you're not here to profit on it. You're here to help the club grow and you're here to have a say in how it runs. And we want people that are interested in that journey. But we would like you to make pilgrimages to come and watch us. Those that are local, I expect we'll see you. Those that aren't so local. I mean, that first game we had at Drawsden, we had a ton of guys. I know Notch was one of them. I know Ant was one of them. I know there was tons of people that we see that are Patreon members. We all came up and I thought I couldn't express how like amazed I was. Grateful. And grateful, yeah, yeah, about people that would put the effort in to come and see this team. That was two years ago. We've moved on since then. You know, we, we should be back in the stadium this season. There's no COVID anymore. United are playing on Sundays. We're going to reach out to all the United supporters clubs. You know, everyone that's traveling over from abroad, come down. It will be free entry to watch us. We are about building a community. And you guys are a massive, massive part of that. That's what we're, we're looking to do. Um, there's some questions here. Someone mentioned, can we take PayPal for it? Not at the moment. Um, someone's mentioned um, paid for ownership with GPay. It's used my Android, Google instead of my Hotmail. Can I change my address? Email us. Any questions... Um, there is a help email, which I think you get with your email, which is a fresh desk email. I think it's Stratford Paddock at fresh desk. Email that with any questions and you should get um, an answer through that as well. Just give us a bit of time because you can imagine it'll be mental today. Matt says, do we all get a login when the app comes? When the app comes, and this will be explained in an email to you with the link in the app as well. If you sign up for the app using the same email that you've bought your registration with, it connects. It does it by magic. So if you do that, then it's happy days and it will just give you the access to it. If you join up with another email, it, it doesn't know who you are and then you'll, you know, it'll, it will not give you the membership features that you've bought. Uh, Gaz says, I'll probably come and watch some games next season. I'm only half an hour away. Fantastic. And this is the thing as well. The players are, are, are actually, they've signed rules to say that they've got to stick around in the bar for an hour after every game. So you can come and mingle with the players. What? 
I, I just didn't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's in your registration form. Now so I'm down for it. Though. it out. One, <laughs> one of the things that I, that pisses me off about Premier League football is the arms length of it. And one of the things I do love about non-league football is you can go into the bar afterwards and go, "Hey, you played well," or "Hey, you were fucking shit today." And they have to go. Uh, hey, yeah, listen, I've, I've fully seen. <laughs> hey, nah, I've actually fully seen that from the experience. <laughs> Um, can non United yeah. fans buy in, says Sareem. Of course. Now, Stratford Paddock is obviously very, very heavily Manchester United supporting club. We're not a protest club. This mm. is not a stand against modern football. We film our game for fuck's sake. Imagine how hypocritical <laughs> that would be. This isn't a stand against any of those things. We're a football team from Manchester that wants to do things in a slightly different way and, and democratize how fan ownership works. That's it. There's plenty of teams out there doing very good things like obviously FC United was started for the reasons it was started there's there's a ton of other clubs that are just anti everything in modern football and they're all really good clubs that exist for their own reasons but doesn't mean we can't exist as well so if you want to you guys want to be um, members I don't give a fuck who you support my assistant manager is a Liverpool fan our director of football is a West Ham fan uh, Deji who gets the sponsorships is a fucking Chelsea fan for his sins you know, <laughs> Cam's a Chelsea fan Will, who's our left back and the producer running the stream, is a whole city fan. Yeah, they exist, right? So it doesn't matter support. who you support. We're all paddock, and that's all that matters as far as I'm concerned. Who does Sophie support? She doesn't even watch football, does she? <laughs> Sophie says no. Um, and, and this is the interesting thing next season with United being part of that Sunday league crowd or Sunday night crowd. You should have Saturday afternoons free to come and watch the boys. No, no. Um, Mushavik says really hope to get to see Paddock in person someday I'm from Bangladesh this is something that we um, really want to push as well is when people are making the pilgrimage to Old Trafford especially if they're playing the day after I imagine if United are playing on Sundays people are probably going to travel on a Saturday mm. come and watch Paddock it'll be free now that is another thing that we're going to vote on should we ever get to the Northwest Counties we're going to ask you guys should we keep it free entry or do we start charging a gate now? Does us charging a gate mean we can pay the players? Does that make us competitive? Whatever those questions are, you guys are going to actually have a fucking say in that sort of stuff. Um, Notch in the comments, Notch obviously was one of the ones who made the pilgrimage and he says, anyone who hasn't traveled to watch the paddock uh, with the return to the stadium this season can't recommend it enough. Fraser says, maybe a stupid question before, but can anyone worldwide join? It's not a stupid question. I don't think it is, at least, anyway, because I get asked it a lot. Um, everybody worldwide. The reason that we did everything through an app. Now, there's some clubs that are that are fan-owned, and they do their fan voting. They still do their fan voting, but they do their fan voting at their annual AGM. So if you're on holiday, even if you live next door to the ground, if you're on holiday, you can't vote, mm. or you have to put it in via post. And that means decisions only get made once a year because it's at the AGM. And they have to be done in person and, and you put your bit of paper in an actual box. For me, that's too slow moving. You know, this is 2022. We are talking in the age where we can know you are logged in, that you're a member. So why do I need this rigmarole of going through an annual AGM? If I want to put a vote out today, I'll get the results of it by Monday. Or even today, realistically, but you know, you're going to give people a certain amount of time to get in the mix. Like uh, Paul says, just paid up, um, up the paddock, living in Canada, so don't get to watch the lads. But I'll keep an eye on the channel. Hopefully, it'll be a good one. Uh, Jake says, we need live streaming because we need to put it out there. Uh, we run a club by the community. Live streaming costs for obvious reasons. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of infrastructure that needs to happen, but trust me, we are working on it. We have got a new media partner sponsor for this season and we're trying to get them to pay for it. So um, stay tuned for all of that lot. But um, there's going to be more and more announcements. Obviously, last week we announced that we're in the Cheshire League. <coughs> Today we're, we're announcing fan ownership. Um, there is a figure that we kind of need to reach. Um, which, to be fair, we've started bloody well, but uh, we're nowhere near that yet. Um, we are, during the course of this stream, we've added 232, so 233, so it's going well. Um, but the, we want to keep pushing. There is something absolutely bonkers on the horizon, um, but we need to see how many members we get in before we start talking about that sort of stuff. But it's about you know, the long-term future and home of where we are. So listen, that's a quick little info. Any questions, get them in the chat. Um, I'll be kicking around for the next hour or so, answering any questions, Not so not the chat, in the actual comments. Any questions that you guys have got, uh, I'll do my best to um, 
Why recruit Asian Britons? What a mad fucking comment. Of course we will. <laughs> <laughs> For starters, was... my team's fucking loads. Like my, my team is about, you couldn't have picked a more diverse team if you were trying. Mm. Um, but I think we represent the city really well. Yeah. And I, I actually think this as well, in terms of the diversity of the football club, I actually think we're, um, we're becoming a bit of a magnet for that. Because if you look around all of the teams we play, they're a little bit Brexit, aren't they? Yeah. A lot of the teams that we play. Yeah, but I think because yeah. having you know, prominent, very diverse <laughs> sort of you know, prominent characters in the club shows that we're a welcome place for that sort of stuff. <laughs> but anything. Um, listen, absolutely buzzing with the amount of you that have got in the mix so far. We are going to make this work and we're going to make it all work together. For everyone that's just joined, welcome to the club. This is now yours. Um, I've literally just given everything away to to make this happen. But it's ours now. And um, we're going to do some fucking madness. So thank you guys for everyone that has joined. Um, you will be getting emails. There is a Reddit group um, as well. So hopefully we can start populating that Reddit group. Let's build a community on there. Because what I don't want now is you all get an email and then you go, right, cool. And then don't act on it. Get onto that Reddit group, introduce yourself, have conversations with other people and start trying to figure out how many people from your area are there. Like you might live somewhere mad like Norwich or something and you'd be like, oh, I must be the only Paddock fan here. Mm. You don't know. Get on the Reddit group and be like, I'm from Norwich, anyone? And you could carpool to come to a game. You know, if there's enough of you, the club will get you a flag. If there's shit loads of you and you go, do you know what? We're going to do like a little, you know, supporters club from Norwich or New Jersey or wherever the fuck you're from. We'll do a flag for you. Um, but cheers for tuning in. Cheers for joining. Uh, and I think up the fucking paddock. Let's have it. Real fan ownership. Real fan input. Real fan change. Real fan power. 50 plus one. We can go better than that. 100 plus none. Download our app. View the free content. Read about the club. That's fine. But if you want more, become a member to vote, to go behind the scenes, to make an impact, interact with a global community around the world, influencing how we grow, where we play, club ethics and values. The more members we have, the faster we grow. Support the club, run the club, own the club. This is ours and no one will take it away. The future is in all our hands.